Hi, Brian White is filling in for Buck. Lake Superior Lake Trout in 200 feet of water with no poles. Join me tonight as I travel to the Keweenaw where we'll be bobbing for lake trout. This is uh, a Northland uh, bucktail and we're in 198 feet of water right here right now. It's a hand line, basically a bobbin stick. And you got a leader and then you got wire line on here too. So you need wire or otherwise a uh, good nano fill or fire line and and big jigs on a stiff rod to feel them, but this is the best way to do it. And I wonder how many of the lures in your tackle box were handcrafted and painted right here in the Upper Peninsula. We'll pay a visit to RJ Lures and Houghton. Every color that we try, you have to catch something on it. It has to work. That's all tonight right here in Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above trout lies deep and still these are what i treasure the only way i measure feelings that i have for this fine land there is so much to discover when your longtime lover of northern michigan the waters of Lac La Belle en route to the crystal clear waters of Lake Superior in search of lake trout. Behind us, the monstrous Mount Bohemia, jutting up through the morning fog. We steadily motored our way through the channel and beyond the irons, out into the fog-covered bed of Grease Bay. Our electronics brought us to a spot in 197 feet of water, where the trout were hopefully waiting. I was fishing with professional fisherman Mark Martin on one last trip before he headed off on his summer tournament run and Captain Larry Smith of Fish On Two Charters. Today, we were bobbing for lake trout. Got him. Get him. All right. Just go hand over hand, Mark. Yeah. Keep it down a little bit lower. There you go. There Pile we go. Now nice I got <laughs> trying to trying to get back in the swing of things here, Larry. It's been, been a little while last year. Mm -hmm. He only hit about three, four times. <laughs> Should be coming up in any time here. Come on. Gotta be close. There he is. How big does he have to be? That's a good, good eating size there. A start right there. <laughs> Would that take uh Larry, about 45 seconds. <laughs> Larry was putting a rubber band on so I could tell exactly where bottom was and he felt it hit and I got a hold of it and missed him three, four times and finally, finally got him. So we'll uh, you throw him right in that. Put him right in the front live wall here. This is a hand line, basically a bobbin stick. What do they call it? Gebbin? Gebbo. Gebbo. With uh, this uh, Northland uh, bucktail jig with tinsel on it. And we're going to put a piece of white sucker, right, Larry? Yep. And you got a leader, and then you got wire line on here, too. And we're in 198 feet of water right here, right now. So you need wire or otherwise some uh, good nano fill or fire line. and and big jigs on a stiff rod to feel them, but this is the best way to do it. I've done it with Larry here a few different times uh, out here on Keweenaw Bay, and it's uh, a nice uh, day in between a few storms here that hopefully we can uh, have a pretty good day. At least it's nice and calm right now, keep our fingers crossed, and uh, hopefully we can pop a bunch of fish. 
There it is. Let's go down and get another one. By that time, Larry should have one going. <laughs> Double header. Hey, that one hit on the way down that time. I felt him tunk. He was tugging at first. Now he's just coming. I'm sure after 190 some feet, they start getting air embolism to him a little bit. A lot of times you can see the air bubbles coming up, but I. Don't want them in that line, that's for sure. Look at that. It's a lamprey mark on him that he had when he was younger there. There's that Northland jig with a chunk of sucker on there, a little tinsel. Yeah, another one for the live well. A lot of times this time of the year we don't come out till nine and and uh, start fishing around nine and noon time, 12.30, we're done with our limit. And leaving fish too, bite fish are still biting when we leave, but uh, as the water warms up and then the fish will start suspending and start trolling and with downriggers and dipsies. And but I, I just like coming out here and doing this this time of the year. It's just uh, take a little break away from the walleye fishing. And yeah, this is a lot of fun. I, I've been doing, I was 40 years ago when I first bobbed. And, and I just enjoy doing it. I've got a couple of rods set up here with braided line and we'll drop one of those down. I've only tried it a couple times, but just like the Gebu, that's just the old school. It's a lot of fun. Everybody I've brought out here and gave them a Gebu to fish with. They liked it, they enjoyed it. They kind of look at it and what the heck kind of deal is this here? But once they catch fish on her, they realize it's pretty neat. Yeah, there's another nice Kiwanabe lake trout. That's the first time Larry and I have been fishing this year together. All right, Larry. Usually he's, he's on my pro staff for doing the ice fishing schools and everything uh, and uh, helps out with all the outdoor writers and TV people and students. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's good having quality people to fish with and good to have quality people teaching people how to fish. So people want to come up here and learn how to do this. There you go. Uh, get a hold of Larry Smith up here and fish on two charters. Wow, that's a better fish there, Larry. Nice. Nice looking fish too, been eating well. I've got sucker here today, but I've used uh, Dace Mentals already and, and uh, Smelt, of course, you know, that's a favorite. And Berkeley Gulp, we got fish on Berkeley Gulp too, four inch gulp on there, pin it on just like you would a piece of cut bait or so. And well, if you bait them like we're doing, you know, sometimes we're using a minnow or, or a Smelt and a tail on there, but if you the way we're baiting them today is we're putting that bait right on the hook. And so those fish are gonna target, bite right there. They're gonna bite that piece of meat. So when they bite that, they're gonna have the hook in their mouth. And always make sure you have that, see that knot after catching the fish, the knot was down right there. You don't want it right there. Even though it's tied on, you're not gonna lose it. You wanna take that knot and put it right up at the top. That way you got better jigging action and better hook setting when you get a fish to grab it. So it'll sit like that when it hits the bottom, it'll rock and if it was down further, it might be hitting like this. I mean, it's not like you can't catch them like that, but you might as well have, have the best percentage for hookups and everything else by doing it the right way. Yeah. 190 some feet's a long way. That's a nicer one. These Northland jigs are kind of like a gaff. <laughs> Larry's got another one. Now they're, they're moving in, that's for sure. sun came out so the fish started biting off. There you go. No, 
other one. They seem to be punking the, the last ones I've had and punked a little harder too. That's gonna be good on a grill. Oh man, that's for sure. Don't miss the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carry-ins welcome. Kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. If you miss a fish or lose one or something, put it right back down on the bottom. A lot of times that fish, you know, they're used to getting poked by fins of other fish and they really don't understand it. You know, they just know that they lost the bait they wanted, so you drop it back down and sometimes you don't even have to have bait on it. They'll come right back and pick it up. I caught one lake trout like that already and this last one I lost is a good one, so... As soon as I take off my ice armor, it starts to rain, and I <laughs> miss a fish. So never brought it up. Like I was telling you, I lost that big one and put it back down and jigged it a few more times here, and luckily I did. Otherwise, I'd brought it up 190-some feet and, and lost the, the fish, but then had to rebate, but put it right back down, and looks like a halfway decent fish. See all those air bubbles coming out? That's what those lake trout do is they, they uh, hear, hear that? That's all that air coming out of them. He's, that's the only fish, one of the few fish that can uh, discharge air and not get air embolism because they can pressurize themselves, a lake trout can, by getting air out of their air bladder so they don't explode. Another nice, clean Keweenaw Bay fish. Can't wait to have some for dinner tonight. A little better fish. That doesn't feel too bad. It was just hanging, it was on there. It must have hooked itself or something. I don't know. Huh. You know, as the water warms, they'll start moving. You know, the bait will start scattering around and they'll start suspending and but uh, yeah, I just enjoy coming out here doing this. Fishing this deep water, long ways down there, but nice fish, nice fish. I got one on that Fenwick. I just had one on uh, your Gebbin stick right here. It's a better one. You can hear that thing still burping gas up. That's a nice looking fish too. Yeah. Sometimes your foot gets in it, a fish flops in it, and it gets all kind of tang, you know, it, it looks tangled up and if you try to undo it, it makes it worse. It starts tightening down and like Larry said, the, the thing you want to do is you take all this, that's all, it looks like it's all tangled up right there and you'd have to bring it all back in and loop it around. You just want to take that, all of this right here, and just throw it all over the side right there and let it, let it all go down. And it all, for some reason, it untangles itself. And you can see right here, it's amazing. Just the weight of that jig right there, it, it's gone. It's all straightened out right now. There's different types of jigs you can use. Everybody has their favorites. I've, I've got... Uh call it banana jig it's it's basically what these ones we have on in ounce and a half and I pour my own one ounce jigs and 
tie my own bucktail on them and paint them up myself. And with everybody's got their favorite. They used to use it called barracuda jig, doll flies, and your basic jig is white, is what most of us use. But now you can get different colors, you know, and holographic colors and so on, but we're just using a basic white jig here today and some bucktail on it. And there's a little glitter on it too. That's about it, you know, simple. Just a hand line fishing, bobbing with a gebo and putting fish in a box. It's fun, I enjoy it. You know, this is it's like hand lining uh, in the Detroit River with one and a half pound weights. It was a method for uh, subsistence fishing, basically. And the, the day that you, you needed the meat to feed the family and this is how this is basically is what they started out with back a hundred and some years ago up here catching lake trout this was the method here is jigs and wire line and go out here in nearly 200 feet of water probably more at times maybe less at some times and uh, feed the family or feed the community so this is it's kind of neat to step back in time and do it the old-fashioned way As spring rolls around, we all start to get itchy for fishing. We're drawn to the fishing tackle aisle of whatever store we're in like a moth to a flame. Spinner blades, blade baits, crank baits, spoons, and more. We always need more tackle. Did you ever wonder who paints all that stuff? Well, some of it's handcrafted and painted right here in the Upper Peninsula. Basically, we got started maybe about 10 years ago. Started as a hobby with making wood lures, mainly for muskies and pike. And you started to make some smaller baits for walleye and started experiment with, you know, jig heads and all the Mojave type fishing stuff that everybody tries to create their own secret type of lure. And um, some other people found out what I was doing and took interest in it. And we started to sell a few to friends and now we're making a lot more business in other businesses and other stores throughout the world even. I was never really big in art. I did graduate from Finland in product design and as I became more familiar with the design of how things worked and I was able to focus on fishing because that was my interest, I've always been interested in fishing. And I guess I thought of trying some different colors, you know, typical fire tiger or what if it was red instead of black or something like that and just trying different things that actually worked for myself and even for friends. As far as airbrushing, I basically taught myself how to airbrush and the more that I did, the more comfortable I got with it and the more custom things that I've done with airbrushing. Basic business started as crankbaits and blade baits and we do a lot of blade baits now. You put your blank in the mold, close up the mold, and then you pour your lead in. And that's one, 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 one. You know, it's, it's starting to take a lot of time and it's starting to sell a lot of them. The demand is going up. <laughs> So last year, I bought the spin casting machine. My molds are made out of a hard rubber, and now you load up your brass blanks, fill it all up with the blanks, put it in this machine, and then when you turn it on, it spins around, and you can adjust the air pressure to keep the mold tight. Pour your lead in, and then in about 20, 25 seconds, you can open it up. When you take them out, it'll look pretty much like that, and then snap them off and then you can take them and clean them up and then they're ready to go in the paint room. These are going to be plated blade baits. We'll send these in to get plated. This is going to be our nickel one and this is how we've been doing them, you know, painting the silver. So this is called our black magic pattern and then coming in this summer we'll have them in the plated version. And we're actually in the process of switching our wood crank baits to solid plastic just to make them a lot more durable and as far as time, my time consumption, it'd be more productive in the long run. And actually, like with one of my first lures that I made, my first deep diving crankbait, I made this bait, and in about 15 minutes, I was trolling on Portage Lake and caught this 14 pound walleye. My biggest walleye, possibly of my life, but we'll see, there's a lot of fish out there to catch yet. We're starting to get a lot into uh, 
crawler harnesses and custom painted spinner blades. A few of the blades that we do, we got several different sizes and you know we do some custom color stuff too that's starting to get to be pretty big. This is a, a stripe pattern blade that I just tried and they seem to work pretty good and I do uh, a lot of this pattern now for Walleyes Unlimited. Paint all their blades. They mainly sell crawler harnesses, a complete harness and a lot of Gander Mountain stores, shields, stores and stuff like that carry them. I had a lot of customers, especially in the local area, to request about spoons and so we started to try out some spoons and those will be available this year. Every color that we try, you know, it has to be, you have to catch something on it, it has to work. This pattern, it's called our Sharpo pattern, basically chartreuse and purple. And basically what we'll do is we'll take maybe 50 to 100 of the same pattern and then I'll spray everything on this particular blade, everything white first. And then we'll come back and then hit chartreuse on all the blades until all the chartreuse is done, usually two or three coats. And then on this blade, I'll come back and hit the other half purple. I'll vote and go through the whole 50 to 100, whichever we're, we're doing. And basically to get our nice scale effect, we'll place the blade on here, we'll place our mesh. And then on this blade, we'll you know, spray gold and then just keep going through all the blades. And then we'll come back and finish the purple around the head part. And then stick on the eyes. And once the whole rack system is loaded, we spend a day clear coating. <laughs> Over the past couple of years, custom colors, especially in the pro circuits, have been really, really big. Uh, we get a lot of you know, custom colors from people that say, hey, can you do this, make it black with chartreuse dots on it or chartreuse stripes or whatever, pretty much whatever the person wants we can do. Our major business is online. We've um, had requests from stores in Germany and Sweden and also throughout the Midwest, Raleigh and Helen's Muskie Shop is a big one for us. A sportsman down in Appleton is a big store for us. Uh, the new place, Michigan Muskie Shop and Angler's Point Marina are both down in the Detroit area. And then a lot of, uh, you know, mom and pop type stores. There's a couple out in North Dakota that have our stuff. RJ Lures is just another example of the top quality workmanship that can be found right here in our own Upper Peninsula. Well, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Monday night right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.